My name is Maddie. Um, I've been vibe coding for about three months. Um, yeah, maybe, well, let me check. June to July, July to August. August is near almost four months. Wow, time flies. Okay, so my name is Maddie. I've been vibe coding for uh, almost four months and I've gotten pretty entrenched in it. <laughs> um, and I really, I really, really enjoy it. So I kind of figured I would just start off and um, explain a bit about myself and my vibe coding journey and then kind of get into the tools that I use um, most and maybe some things that I've built. So let's get into it. So I recently um, tweeted something that's going kind of like baby viral in the vibe coding community. Baby viral meaning at the time of recording it has like 335 bookmarks, 14,000 views, and 225 likes. Baby viral. Uh, so hasn't breached containment, but a couple of people in the in the vibe coding community have, have asked me some questions, so I figured I would kind of get on here and explain. So I figured I'd first go through um, the actual tweet I sent. Maybe we can put it up on the screen here somewhere. Um, but basically it just says, as a vibe coder, here are the main tools I'm using. And then I get into each and every tool. So uh, first of all is Lovable, uh, and I say that's for web apps because I don't tend to build anything too technical. So with Lovable, Lovable was the first vibe coding tool that I used. Um, I was introduced to it by my dad, thank you, thank you to my dad, um, and he was using it and he was like, hey, I think you'd really love this. I tried it out and I was like, oh my god, I really love this. Uh, my first kind of uh, project that I built was a um, pet hero comic creator was what I called it. So you input a picture of your pet, uh, it would get turned into a Golden Age comic book cover starring your pet, and then you would have the option to um, buy a poster and that would get sent to Shopify and sent to a print-on-demand provider, and then they would um, send over the poster. No one actually bought me, <laughs> but in theory that was how it worked. So I use Lovable when I'm building some things that are, you know, less technical, um, they just came out with their Lovable Cloud, which means that you have a backend, a backend built in, and also um, AI features, so you don't have to bring in your own API keys, uh, which is really cool. Bolt, which I'll talk about later, also introduced kind of the same functionality, and both of those are powered by Stupabase on the backend. Um, but really cool. I, I'm a big fan of Lovable. I just um, won a hackathon with Lovable. Actually, it was a Ditto hackathon, so I built a copy of. Um, Google Drive, Google Docs, and then later on I added Google Sheets. Um, and I built this in about four hours for the hackathon. I did win first place, yay. And I also won um, another award, best use of Toolhouse. Toolhouse is basically a, um, it's like lovable, but for AI agents. So you can build AI agents using prompts. Really cool. Um, definitely recommend checking them out as well. Next up, I say that for something more technical, I'm gonna go to Cursor. Was introduced by Cursor because down here in San Diego, where I live, um, there is a group called SDX. They hosted a Cursor Hackathon, um, and I joined the hackathon. I was in person, it was really cool. Um, I was always super, super um, intimidated by Cursor. Thought that there was no way I was technical enough to understand how to use it. Um, and I was just I'm really intimidated. So I didn't use Cursor for a while. Before the hackathon, about a week before, I went, you know, okay, I just need to try this out. If I'm terrible at it, I guess I just won't go. <laughs> um, but I tried it out and um, it was a lot easier and more user-friendly than I expected, coming from someone who has previously described herself as non-technical. Um, so used it, tried it out, was still a little intimidated, but it was much easier than I expected. Um, and then went to the actual hackathon and I just spent the whole day on Cursor um, and really got the hang of it. So I was really excited by that and it's it's become much, much less intimidating. Um, so if you haven't tried it yet and you are intimidated as a vibe coder, just jump into it. Um, you can ask questions, um, maybe to ChatGBT and be like, hey, give me a guide on how to use Cursor. Um, give me a guide to what commands never to run or to have it ask for permission before it runs. Um, you can put that in your cursor rules, but really enjoy using cursor if I'm building something that's actually technical. Um, it's just really helpful. Then um, 
I say if I want to build mobile apps through my browser, typically I'll go to anything. Uh, that's createanything.com or at anything AI on Twitter. Um, just a really simple way to create mobile apps through your browser. Um, you can create mobile apps or web apps and you can do it kind of both in the same project if you want, which is really cool. Um, another really cool functionality is that they allow you to um, submit to the app store. Kind of, they, they handle most of the process. You just click a couple buttons, enter your Apple developer um, account information. It packages the build, everything sends it over to the app store or app store connect um, and lets you just go from there. Uh, you still have to go in and update kind of your, your listing information um, and if there are any any bugs with your app that need to be reviewed um, then you have to do that but otherwise it's it's really simple. Um, I won a hackathon with anything as well. I built a kind of digital cork board which uh, was really fun. Um, it was a pretty simple build, but it was fun. Uh, won first place with that, which I was excited about. It was my first ever hackathon win. Um, just, yeah, really, really fun, really great tool. I also use Natively a lot. Um, that's natively underscore dev. Um, another great tool for building mobile apps in your browser. Um, if you want to build mobile apps in a mobile app, like using an app on your phone to build an app that is on your phone, um, you can use Rourke or Vibecode. Uh, I know Vibecode specifically has a lot of content on YouTube and social media about how to use it. Um, so if you're interested in, in that aspect, definitely go check it out. Um, so I've used them a ton to build some apps. They're a really cool process and it's just kind of mind blowing to be able to build an, a mobile app for your phone, of course, on your phone, like from anywhere. Just, it's really cool. <laughs> Um, and then back to Bolt, uh, bolt.new, um, and this is what I use for if I have like, typically a web app um, that's semi-technical, like I know I'm going to have to use the terminal at some point, uh, no, I'll probably have to debug some things, um, that's where I'm going to go because they do have a terminal that you can, can use in, in the app. Um, so I use that if I'm building like a less technical um, web app or website, um, I guess just really really cool. Um, they host a lot of hackathons as well. Um, they're really big on the community, so big fan of Bolt. Um, and I use GitHub for obvious reasons. Of course, I don't think I really have to go into that, but uh, um, GitHub for obvious reasons. ChatGPT for planning and kind of fleshing out my ideas. Um, so that's what I use kind of at the beginning of my process. Um, not necessarily creating a PRD, but just dumping out everything in my brain and saying, okay, um, this is my basic idea. Help me flesh this out into something that will actually work. So I go through that, um, I brainstorm through there, do a whole, whole bunch of stuff, and then I can go back and reference it. Um, and sometimes it helps me build prompts like to input right at the beginning. I'll also use that um, if I'm having some errors that uh, whatever app I'm using can't help me figure out like I'm stuck in an error loop. So I'll use that, I'll paste in some logs, um, error messages, and just say like, okay, um, this, is, this is what I'm running into, help me out with this. Um, provide any additional context I can, any docs, anything like that, um, and I'll do it in kind of the same chat to make sure that it has that additional context. I think it's super helpful. Um, then I also use Netlify for hosting um, and for you know building, deploying, everything and Supabase for the back end. And I was just actually at the Supabase conference, like their first ever user conference, called Supabase Select in San Francisco, which was a really fun time. Um, it was really cool to be able to see everyone who I've talked to, meet some really cool people, um, learn a lot more about Supabase, um, see some announcements from Supabase, and then also see some great talks from some other, like, really, um, inspiring people in the industry. So I had a really great time with that. They did a fantastic job, um, but I love, I love Supabase. Um, and if you've ever used any vibe coding tool, you probably know about Supabase. And if you don't, go check out Supabase now. So I guess I'll kind of get into my background a little bit. So I am not, um, I don't have a technical background. I work in real estate, real estate investment, and also renewable energy. 
um, have a couple comedies with that. Co-founded one with my dad, actually, which is really exciting. Um, Co-founded another one with my sister, also really exciting. Um, but that's kind of my my day to day, and then I do this for for fun, and just it feels really fulfilling to be able to build cool things. So I'm just kind of progressing through everything and, and just seeing like what are the limits, like what can I do? And I kind of tweeted out something too about um, not knowing when I can consider myself to be like at least semi-technical. Like in the past I've been calling myself non-technical um, because I didn't have a technical background, but I do feel like I'm at the point where I can't really do that anymore. Like I have to call myself at least semi-technical um, to be accurate because I understand a lot more than I did before. I'm obviously not an engineer or anything like that, um, but maybe like a newbie developer um, is the stage I'm at. Because I do really try to understand as much as I can when I'm vibe coding and use it as more of a learning process rather than just like do this for me. Um, and I think that's really key for when you're trying to um, actually create real things and that potentially could make money in the future, which I know is a lot of people's goals for this. So I think it's really, um, really important to be able to just have that base level understanding. And I think that's where I'm at now in, in my process is I have a base level understanding and realistically, I know, or at least know how to learn how to build anything that I would realistically want to build. Like I'm not an AI researcher, I'm not going to be able to actually build like any models, but um, web apps and mobile apps and things that I want to build, realistically I can build those now. So it doesn't matter, I don't think, if I'm actually writing most of the code myself. I know how it works on a basic level, so I do think that I'm at the point where that's possible for me. And I think that's really incredibly cool. And I think that's something like a, a, a jump that a lot of vibe coders do have to make eventually is this thinking and saying like, you know what, I, I have learned. Um, I have learned and I'm at a point where I can really do this. And I think that's just so incredibly exciting. I tweeted about this and I received so much support from people and from developers or actual developers, not vibe coders, telling me that like, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. And if I'm having a great time, which I am, I really am having a great time, that's what's most important. But if I'm building real things, then why can't I call myself a developer? And I'm still I still struggle with that a little bit, but it has made me realize that, you know, this is possible. So I think it's just really cool. Um, I'm having a great time. And I think if you haven't jumped into vibe coding yet, now's the time. Um, it's just, it's so fun to be able to see things just come to life in front of your eyes. It's really amazing. And I really want everyone to be able to experience it um, and to be able to learn from it and to just be able to create things, great ideas that they had have had in their minds forever, basically. If you want to follow along with my journey, I'm at Maddie D. Reese, flash it up here, uh, at Maddie D. Reese everywhere. Uh, my website is maddiedreese.com and I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear if there are any tools that I should be trying. Love to hear if there are any tools that haven't worked for you and maybe I can help you out with that. Love to hear if you have any questions. Really would just love to hear from you if you'd like to follow along. So thank you so much for watching. 